Okay, g'day all and welcome to another video. So today I wanted to go through adding layers. Yeah, hopefully we can get through the uh, add uh, adding of the initial layer or the first layer, the input layer, and we can also go through uh, adding the hidden layers and the output layer to our neural nets. Uh, so a couple of things first of all, um, I have a new song. Yeah, I recorded it, I wrote and recorded a new song, so I'll leave a link in the video description. It's called Perfect Storm. You can go over to my music channel and have a bit of a look at that. Uh, I want to say a big thank you to all of the Patreons. So uh, all of the support that I'm getting for these videos, I think it's absolutely fantastic and uh, really encouraging, really good fun. And um, so if you'd like to support what I'm doing here, you can run over to Patreon uh, or you can just give the video a thumbs up. Uh, you can subscribe to the channel if you want. Uh, it would be really cool if we can get to 20,000 subscribers at some point. Yeah, I think that would be absolutely amazing for, uh, you know, really a low level programming channel. I think that'd be quite an achievement. Um, all right, so today what I wanted to have a bit of a squiz at is uh, the layers, the sizes of the matrices of the layers. So whenever we add a layer to our neural net, be it either the input layer or one of the hidden layers, um, the one thing that we've really got to be careful of is that all of our matrices are the correct size. Uh, that way, when we go to feed forwards or we do our back prop, it's just a bunch of um, matrix operations, one after another. And we can really optimize that. So, yeah, that's what we're after. That's what we're after. So if we just have a bit of a look at how the code is going. Uh, okay, so the first part that we might look at is, is in the neural net class under the uh, init function just here. Uh, what we've got to do at this point is uh, add the input layer, the first layer. So there is something interesting about the input layer, and that's that um, it doesn't have a lot of matrices. So the input layer is really, uh, it's really just a single matrix. Yeah, it's really just activation. Um, but what we might do, so the first thing that we might do is we might say something like uh, if layers uh, dot, what is it, size does not equal zero. We'll just put a little check here at the start. Uh, we'll say throw um, neural net has an input layer already. Okay, so if you try to call init and the neural net has already been initialized, then we just throw an error and we get on with life. <laughs> um, so one of the next things that we've got to do is save this training set batch size just here. So I might make, um, uh, so we might make another variable up here and we'll call it uh, training set batch size. Uh, training set batch size or this dot training set batch size equals training set batch size. Um, I must have spelled something wrong. Training set batch size. Yeah, try it. Tra yeah, okay, so there's a training set batch size. I think that's right. Come on, IntelliSense. Nope, doesn't like it. Let's just... Um... Okay, there we go. Okay, so what we've got to do after this, uh, after we've added the uh, batch size, we've got to actually create the input layer. So the input layer itself is really just uh, a single matrix. It's just activations. Um, it's just the input values, and uh, it really doesn't need any of the other matrices. So the input layer is slightly different. It's slightly simpler than the uh, other hidden layers. But if we go something like um, layer, we'll go star input layer equals a new uh, layer. Uh, neuron counts, okay, well, it's going to be input neuron count, something like that. But the next thing that we've got to do is uh, we've got to set the activations. So uh, I'll put a diagram somewhere uh, in order to, to hopefully explain this a little bit better, but we've, we've got an option here, we've got an option here to gain a lot of performance really, really quickly, and that's by, uh, as we've spoken about before, by batching together uh, the inputs. But so, so the point is, the, um, the activations of the input layer is really um, a collection of uh, columns and each column is a different uh, example from the training set. So say we've got um, 10 examples in our batch, um, what's going to happen is that each example is going to take up uh, a single column of the activations of the input layer. And so it's in this way that we can... Um, put in multiple uh, examples from our training set at once and feed forward all of them uh, together simultaneously really, really quickly and uh, also backprop uh, with 10 examples at once. So, but the trouble that we've got at the moment is that we only need to set the input layer's uh, activation matrix. So if we come over here to layer and just scroll up a little bit, where are we? Uh, this one. 
Yeah, that's the only matrix that we need for the input layer, since that's the only matrix that the following layer, the first hidden layer, will actually read. Um, so we can make that public uh, so that we could set it from neural nets, or we could just make an extra method down here in layer that's specifically designed only for the input layer, and uh, that's to set that, uh, to set that activations matrix. I think that's the best way to go. Yeah, I think that's the best way to go. Uh, actually, I did want to mention also, uh, before we really get going, um, I'll, be, I'll be collecting together all of the ideas. So, so thank you very much for your feedback. And I think the ideas that you people are giving me are really, really interesting stuff. A lot to think about. Yeah, so I love reading all of those things. And I'll collect together the ideas and the changes that we want to make. And uh, I'll, I'll do all of the changes together in a video. Yeah, I think that's just kind of, I don't know, helps the flow, I guess. Yeah, but good suggestions. If you've got more suggestions, leave them down in the uh, down in the comments. I love to read those. Uh, even if we don't end up uh, taking on the suggestions, uh, I, I I think it's important that you guys make me think a little bit about what I'm doing. Otherwise, I'll just hee ho and make the worst neural net library possible. <laughs> Who's to say we're not going to do that anyway? What am I doing here? Let's say uh, void. Let's just write void and then uh, well uh, set set. Input layer activation matrix. Yeah, something like that. Uh, neuron count and int batch size. Okay, so the only thing that we need for our uh, input layer is the activation matrix. We might as well make a separate uh, little function. So all we've got to do here is say that the activations matrix activations equals a new matrix. And the uh, the number of rows is the neuron count, uh, or in other words, that's the number of uh, elements that are in the input. So, say we've got I don't know, maybe four bits of input um, per uh, training set, or maybe 128 bits, maybe a thousand. Uh, so that's the neuron count, and the second value, the number of columns. Uh, for the input layer is the number of um, examples that we send through at once. So that's the batch size. Okay, just looking at this destructor here, I can see that I'm going to forget to fill that out, but hopefully I won't. Let's just save that. So we'll go uh, hidden layer, and we'll call that function set input layer activation matrix, and the neuron count is input neuron count. So that's the number of bits or the number of uh, elements per example. And the number of examples is the training set batch size. Something like that. Okay, so once we've made our input layer, we can push it onto the back of our uh, layers. Yeah, push it onto the back of our uh, vector just there. Um, so it will be in this function also that we actually create the training set, but we're not quite ready to do that yet, I don't think. So if we just come down here to uh, add layer. So when we add a layer, um, one of the first things that we've got to do is make sure there's an input layer. Let's see. So if the layers dot size um, is less than one, yeah, so if we haven't got an input, an input layer, it. It. Um, throw. Um, what will be the error? I think um, an input layer must be present prior to adding hidden layers. Please call, and what was the name of the function? In it, I think. Uh, uh, most of these little messages, these little throws here, will just be um, things that we'll read ourselves while we're developing. Okay, so the next thing that we've got to do is say that there's a layer. This is our hidden layer, and it's called maybe hidden layer. And it equals a new layer. And the neuron count is neuron count. Oops. Okay, so this is a little bit recursive. I don't think it's complicated, though. So... When we add a hidden layer, um, we can set the hidden layer's previous layer, uh, because the previous layer to the layer that we're adding now is the back, or it's the um, last 
uh, item in our layers uh, vector. Yeah, so we can do that now. We can say uh, layers. No, we can't. We can say hidden layer. Um, set previous layer. Uh, layers dot back. Yeah, we can do that, but the, mm, we also need to know the batch size, so I think I might have made a mistake. Um, set previous layer, we should also put in here um, the training set batch size. Let us hit save for a second. Uh, okay, I think that's okay, but then we need to layers, uh, push back, layer. Yeah, so if we run over here to uh, set previous layer, so we just right click and we'll go to uh, go to definition. Yeah, over here. So this is um, uh, this is the set previous layer in the layers. Uh, okay, if we just scroll up the top and we see what we've got to set. So activations. Okay, I'll just copy activations and we'll scroll back down to. So the activations for the layer, there's going to be uh, one activation per neuron uh, in this layer, uh, but if we're sending through a batch size of say 10, then there's going to be 10 columns of that. So the matrix that we've got to create here for activations is the neuron count multiplied by the training set batch size. Okay, um, this stuff gets really, really confusing. Uh, neuron count and training set batch size and the same for the delta activations since that's the change in the activations those two matrices have to be exactly the same size scroll up the top what else have we got sums same thing for sums yeah so sums is actually the same matrix yeah, as activations it's just the uh, matrix prior to the activations having been uh, applied so we can just copy this again and we can copy this again, only change it to delta sums. Delta sums. Um, okay, so that's activations and sums. What else have we got? Weights. Uh, okay, so the weights. Um, there's... The weights are the weights between this layer and the previous layer's neurons. So what we end up with is a matrix of sizes um, this layer's neuron count multiplied by the previous layer's neuron counts so that we've got uh, one weight uh, for each of the connections between the neurons of this layer and the previous layer. Uh, weights equals a new matrix, uh, neuron count and previous layer neuron count. And the same goes for the delta weights. Exactly the same thing. Yeah, so that we've got uh, one connection for, for each of the uh, pairs of neurons between the two layers. Let's just scroll up the top and see what else we've got. All right, so we've got um, weights. Okay, the bias. I think this might be the last one. Might be the last one. So the, the bias is kind of, mm, the bias is kind of interesting. The bias is just a value that we add uh, to the activations so that we can kind of shift the whole function up or down and more easily replicate um, something like the complete Boolean set. Uh, I think back in the day they had trouble, uh, before they worked out to add a bias, they had trouble getting to something like uh, XOR, I think it was. Yeah, neural nets had, uh, had trouble uh, solving the XOR problem, which should be easy, you know, it should be easy. Okay, so we could say that the biases, uh, because they're reused for each value in the uh, batch of training examples, we could say that the biases are, you know, the neuron counts of this layer multiplied by the batch size. Uh, but, whoops, uh, but we actually know that the biases are going to be exactly the same for every one of those um, elements in the batch size. So... Uh, what tends to be done is instead of uh, duplicating um, the column of biases over and over again, say 10 times if our batch size is 10, uh, what we tend to do is just create a column vector, um, which is cheap, and we do this, add the column vector. Yeah, so it's, it's a memory saving trick. Okay, so at, at, at any rate, we've got uh, bias equals a new 
matrix uh, neuron count and one. That's a column vector right there. And the delta bias is the same thing. And we hit a bit of save. And I think, I think that's all of our matrices set up. So we can't forget one thing here. This is the set previous layer function, which means that at some point we better set the previous layer. So let's say uh, this um, previous layer equals uh, previous layer. And let's also say that previous layer next layer equals this. Yeah, there we go. Something like that. Um, we can actually come up to the uh, destructor for layers and make sure that we fill that out. So uh, I think we can just grab all of these matrices just here and copy them to our destructor and uh, delete them one after another. So delete. Yeah, and then we'll just put a few semicolons on the end. And that should just about make sure that the uh, destructor of the layers class is at least um, getting rid of the matrices that we're using. Something like that. And the other one that we want to be careful of is the destructor for the uh, matrix, I think, is fine. Uh, yes, yes, it's still on aligned malloc. Yeah, we can have a bit of a go at changing that uh, in a future video when we uh, apply all of the changes that we are going to make. Uh, but the other one that we've got to be careful of is the neural nets destructor. Okay, so in the neural nets destructor, if you delete a neural net, then one of the things that it has to really make sure of uh, is that this uh, layers vector just here is deleted. So we might just go um, for layer start L in layers, uh, delete L. And at the end, we might say layers, oops, Keep doing that, clear. Oh. Little typo just there. Okay, so when we delete our neural net, we've got to delete all of the layers one by one, and when the layers are deleted, they delete all of their matrices, and when the matrices are deleted, they do an aligned free. And we should be right as rain. And uh, maybe if we just come over to main, and we change main a little bit just to run a little test and see what happens. We might include um, neural net.h. Um, okay, so we'll come down here into main and we'll say uh, grace AI uh, neural net n equals, I might make this a pointer since I love pointers. New And we'll say something like n dot in it. Um, let's say there's 10 neurons in our input layer. The training set batch size is uh, 5. And the output neuron count, which will really come into play only when we're, when we're dealing with the training set, um, that can be 4. And then we might say n, uh, add a layer. Let's add a layer, a hidden layer with 10 neurons just for fun. Let's add a hidden layer with three neurons and a hidden layer with um, four neurons. Yeah, so the last layer, the output layer, has to be the same yeah, size as whatever we said in the training set. But anyway, um, let's then say something like uh, delete and let's see what happens. So I'll just put a bit of a break point there on return and we'll give it a run and see what happens. See if we can actually create our little uh, neural net. Wow! Uh, it looks like it made it. Yeah, it looks like it made it. I mean, that's not proof that it's working at all, but... <sighs> well, we're getting somewhere, people. We've now got layers added. Uh, I don't think we're too far off being able to feed forward, which means that we're not too far off uh, being able to backprop, which is really where the exciting stuff happens, because that's when we can get our neural net to do something useful. <laughs> yeah, so look forward to that. It uh, should be really good fun. As always, I'll be putting the source code up for the Patreons. It's a big thank you for the supporting the uh, channel. And if you want to support what I'm doing here, you can jump over to Patreon or you can give the video a thumbs up. Uh, you could subscribe if you want or uh, jump over to Facebook and say hello. It's all good, whatever you want to do. Uh, most of all, I just want to say uh, thank you very much for watching and I want you to have a really good day. <laughs> Adios.